<laughs> One more time. That sounds pretty good. Cool. Okay, um, so same rules as last time. I'm going to try not to write below this line so people can see. Uh, last time you guys were too polite. If I start to write below this, I want everyone to scream out and make sure I don't do it, okay? Uh, uh, another warning, just I was thinking about where we are in these three talks. And think of it as a little a new mountain. I would say that after last time, we got to here. So for today, it's gone. I hate this mic. Uh, so today we have some hard work to do going up over the over the edge here. Um, and by the end of the day, we'll be boy, boys to you know, have fun tomorrow and just roll down the hill. So this will be about algebraic cycles tomorrow. And we'll take everything that we've learned and kind of put it all together. OK. So to start with today, I want to just review a little bit of what I said yesterday. So I wonder if I should just yell. How's that? Let's just turn it off. How about that? Well, I think I can speak loudly enough. That's okay? Okay, we'll do that. All right. So yesterday I was giving you this picture. So here are all topological spaces. And inside there, you have the topological Lenorian groups. And you write it like that. Lenorian group objects in this category. And I told you that you should think of these as topological modes. And if I was being really careful, I would put the word unstable in there. We'll get back to that. And for any topological space X, then there's a way of pushing it down into this category. And so M of X, mode of X, and just the B-variant group on X apologizes the whole way. And what I've tried to explain is that this object somehow contains all the information about X which can be seen by taking the cohomology. Now, the other thing I told you was that the reason you don't usually study the homotopy theory of these guys is that there's a much easier model. So, the homotopy theory of these objects, by which I mean doing homotopy classes of maps between them, uh, seeing how these objects decompose homotopically in terms of other things, is a completely equivalent to the homotopy theory of chain complexes. equal to zero there is just because I want non negatively graded chain complexes. And that comes from the unstable part. I could do the same picture by replacing topological spaces by spectra, if you know what those are. And then I would get unbounded chain complexes and I would be dealing with a lot of spaces. But let's not go into details there. So this motor of X, the usual name of X is the thing chain complex. And let's see. I told you a couple of other things I wanted to review. Let's see if X has a base point, and you can look at the reduced mode of where I set that base point equal to zero. And then the reduced mode on the sphere is an element of plane space. So something representing singular cohomology. Over here in the algebraic world, that corresponds to just the chain complex Z where you put that in dimension nine. Nothing else. Uh, and yeah, thank you. And now I really want to write here, but I'm not going to. Um, this category also has a suspension operator on it. So the height of suspension of the motor is going to be the motor of the height of suspension. And if I go over into the algebraic world, that just means taking my singular chain complex and shifting it up. The chain complex up. Right. And then 
finally, if you look at the maps between these things. So this is, this is a suspension. This is maps into and out of a paint space. This is the homology of the eye suspension of X. So the I pairs with the M. It's a suspension isomorphism to get down. It's really big deal. So the suspension and the first coordinate here just acts as a shifting up and down. Uh, no, I can be defined everywhere. I'm just being a little bit, I don't want to go into details. Okay. Right, other questions? Again, feel free to interrupt as we go along. All right. So that was the story for topological spaces. Then I wanted to go over to algebraic varieties. And what I'm trying to convince you of is that it would be a good idea to take this and embed it in some new category. So to throw in some new things here. And there's no real good name for this. I'm going to call it MB, or the Morel Wojtowski category. And that should be a lot like the category of topological spaces. Okay, you should be able to glue things together. You should be able to make classifying spaces for group objects. Uh, I should be rich enough to do how much I can Uh, yeah, so eventually we're going to do that. Right now I'm big enough that it doesn't really matter. But yeah, there's going to be algebraic varieties over some. There would be some, a lot of interest in doing this over spec Z. Okay, I've had applications to number here, but that's how that works out. Alright, so we have this new category that's going to be like topological spaces. Inside here, there will be something like the category of joint group objects. And these are going to be geometric. And again, so for any algebraic variety that's going to have a motive living in here, uh, this will have a suspension operator on it. You can start looking at things like the maps from there into there. Here, remember, we only really cared about SN and actually the uh, lens spaces here because all motives decompose just in terms of basic items of paint spaces. Uh, spaces can be built themselves. Zero? Yeah. Zero? Yeah. Um, no, they're different. So this is the category of spaces. These are the category of growing group objects. So this is taking my algebraic right and expanding it to something bigger. No, this is not motives. MV stands for real robust. Yeah. Not spaces. Not that, but it's, you're supposed to think of it like as analogous to the category of spaces. So this is my big circle in that picture. This is the small circle. Does that make sense? No. Okay. No, no, I mean intuitively it makes sense. Definition. Okay. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> All right. Um, so these things are going to be like single cohomology, this is some kind of bi-during cycle cohomology business. You're right, I'm not defining these for you yet. There's a bunch of machinery involved. Categories where we do homotopy theory, and so that's going to come into the doing homotopy theory there. Uh, we're always doing homotopy theory, so this means homotopy classes of maps. So, yes, that's homotopy theory. So, you were here yesterday. I should just tell you that I have not given any definitions yet. I'm giving a picture, and the definition will come. All right, so the last thing I wanted to say just to complete this is to give a little bit of history. This is, in a way, well, I think it's worth saying. It's a nice picture. So 
there's the motivation for motives, if you like, why, why people start thinking about what they begin with. So, we started with uh, the big conditions. So, I'll just do a very brief review here. The variety defined over some kind of finite field. Well, finite field. X bar will be tensor out for the library closure. And I want to look at the points in here which are defined over a certain subfield. So it's the NK, the number of points of this guy defined over F of K. And you want to study these numbers. Figure out how, you know, how, I don't know, figure out things about these numbers. And you can assemble them into a zeta function. Uh, this was meant to be a motivation for studying this category, motives. Okay, so, well, I tried to answer this yesterday, although I admit I didn't give details. But in the of trying to prove the Murrah conjecture, what Wolofsky found is that he had to tackle things, he had to detect some phenomena which didn't live here, or which lived up here. Uh, another piece of motivation is that algebra K theory not sort of live in this world. Algebra K theory can only be detected here. So if you're studying the algebra K theory, how based on the things, you kind of have to have this. Not the stable homotopy theory, no. The subject of tomorrow's lecture is what's going to be 
this category is more just limited to the Azure Bank side. Making this category, I'm trying to write it down explicitly. And there are two basic difficulties and two basic issues. One is that we have to have some way of adding new objects. Two skins, I'm going to glue them together in some funny way. Well, I can't do that in an algebraic variety, but I need to be able to do that here. So, pretty much, that's what's going to be accomplished for me. We're going to make a new object and just throw it in. Should not something very interesting later. The second thing is that we need a notion of homotopy process of maps. So, I guess I've decided to use players like Max for initial speed. And I'll use gamma just to represent more general objects which may live in this category. Of course, I need to be able to get to the gamma prime there too, but it's not very huge. So I want to write down some basic properties that this has to satisfy. First of all, you need that, well, there's a projection map. Homotopy classes of a map behaving reasonably, this should be an isomer. Whether I think I'm going to talk about it or anything. It's called homotopy invariance. Say one more time? Yeah, set of maps. sequence that looks like as follows. So I can do x into gamma, u into gamma, plus these are going to do for this set. Yep. Plus, so I mean, if they're sets, they just mean the code products of this one. And for some reason, I just prefer to think about the stable house kind of category, in which case these would be going through. Thank 
kind of phenomenon I will pop in here that I want to really talk about. So this itself will not quite be homotopy classical with that. But there will be an interpretation where you kind of take an injective resolution of that kind of thing, and then it is. Right. What's really happening is that you have some kind of drive category, and this means maps and drive category. So what I want to say about this is that this does hold for spaces. So it's a reasonable thing to ask here. It's really the source of things like the Maya of sources that we call knowledge. These were spaces that occurred in honor of a famous space here, which would be exactly the Maya of sources. So there are two, well, okay, let me write down one more sentence, and then I'll tackle that. So M B, what it will basically be, the universal object of the universal category, which admits a map from schemes. reasons we're going to be using the smooth schemes. We'll talk about that probably next time. Satisfying those kind of problems. So I'd like to say the universal homotopy theory. This can be made completely precise. There's a lot of machinery involved in saying making this precise. I need to tell you exactly what homotopy do that. But I am going to tell you exactly why this is not quite right. And I will give you an explicit definition of this category after the talk today. Okay. An explicit, you know, no, no lying at all. So, okay. So first of all, 
I could consider it more general covers than two fold covers. That sort of falls out of that action, actually. What's going to happen is that I'm going to need to consider covers other than heuristic covers. So even more general in that direction. And we'll talk about that next time. But for right now, let's just do Zeresky to get the idea. So what I'm really making is which other color I'll be created for the Zeresky topology. So what's every common topic theory for the Italian topology, for the Vishnavish topology, if you know what that is. There's one for any variety of topology you want. This depends on what phenomenon you want to study. But to get the ideas, I think the tree is much restricted to this one. So that was one lie. Uh, really want a different topology. Let's look up our next time. The second lie was that classes of maps is, in some sense, too naive a thing to think about. What's really the best way to say it is that for any two objects, you need a function space, and then point out of that space will be how we're talking about. We'll get back to that in a minute. But really, when I talk about universal homotopy theory, you just come with function space again. Destroy property A. And then we go back here and start over. Let's go back to step B. So now we wind up by homotopies again. Now we do this complicated sheet publication. Keep doing the loop over and over and over again. An infinite number of times. And that's what's going to be homotopy class over time. Step no. Uh, this sounds crazy. How are you ever going to be able to compete with this? You have to do something an infinite number of times. And that is the major obstruction in 
prove anything about the Euler Hopping group. The interesting theorems often come down to showing that actually this procedure stops after one or two steps. So I think the big advance made by Borbowski, which kind of led to Dr. Schumann's sort of homology in which let people uh, actually work with that as a theory, was the proof that for the kind of cycle spaces which come up, that this process stops after two steps. All right. That's really what we're doing here. So for this, if you do, yes. yes. Let me just say one more thing. So what I said before, that's pretty nice suggestion, was that what we're doing really is looking at pre sheets of supplemental sets. And that's the unstable version. If you look at pre sheets of spectrum, that's the stable version. All right. So now what I want to do is some sample computation. Again, I haven't told you these definitions yet, but I want to give you some sense of how things should work. And these are going to be sample computations which are so easy that I only have to figure, worry about the homotopy invariance problem. And that kind of awkward homotopy simplification business is not going to come into play. So, let's do the easiest thing possible. Homotopy class of a natural point into the mind. Go through our little procedure here. Again, we're not going to worry about this piece. So I start with all possible maps. So that's all possible points on the line. And if two of them can be connected by an A1 homotopy, okay, so by a map from A1 to A1, so I'm going to identify them. So basically, everything I can identify, we just have one point. I should jive with your intuition. And this should be a contractible object. So how much have you of a map from a contractible thing into a contractible thing? Point means the initial object, which is speculative. So that one is not very interesting. Let's do that now. So this is the affine line with the origin of the move. So again, going to that procedure, well, maps from a point N is the point here. So that corresponds to the units in the field. So anything in A1 except for origin. And now I have to line out my homotopies. So for homotopies, I have to look basically at algebraic paths in this space. I need to ask, is it possible to get a copy of A1? And now I'm referring to down the dimension. Is it possible to connect two points by a map from A1 into this thing? And the answer is no. So the only maps from A1 into A1 minus 0 are constants. Let's think about that just a minute. Um, any graduates in the audience so we can care about. This is spec of K of T of T inverse. So a map like that means that I need to give a polynomial which has an inverse. The only one of those are the constants. So there are no homotopies in this region. So I should think of this as being really uh, a legitimate time off. points in a module homotopy. If this were topology, any two points could be connected by a path. We would get nothing, just a single point. Here we have no algebraic path, so there are no homotopies that have F star. This example is good to know because F star comes up a lot in this theory. It's usually all coming from this basic computation.
do one more computation, which is a little bit more sophisticated, which will get us a lot. I want to compute, I want to buy the classes of maps from a point into GLN. So again, you should think of this as motet and pi naught as a function. So we have GL1 sitting inside GLN. Uh, constant goes to the matrix like that. And we have a max at then by the determinant. So that's going to give me a little sequence like this. It's not an exact sequence. GL1 are just the units, that's A1 minus 0. So this is what I just computed. That's F star. This is F star. What I want to convince you of is that this map is trajectory. Uh, let's switch to rows. So let's switch rows one and two. So I'm going to take my matrix A, write down a matrix, which will do that for me. I'm going to put T's in it in various upper way. So I think what I want to do is this. Another path in generator two, and check that this is always invertible. I chose this coefficient so that the determinant is one. Yep. One minus t, one plus t. That gives me one minus t squared plus t squared of one. So at time zero, that's the identity I have a. At time one, then I have uh, zero minus one. Two times a. Okay, that's not quite what I wanted. I have that two there. But I've already seen that I can also do this kind of row operation, where I multiply the first row by two, add it to the second. So that's connected to one. So using a 
sequence of one, two A1 homotopy theories, I can see that A matrix is connected to the matrix I get by switching two rows. All right, so I'm doing really well. I can do this row operation, I can do that one. By doing those, I can make the matrix diagonal. So I get myself down in here. You can quite switch and multiply one by matrix. Ah, yeah, thank you. I have to keep the determinant the same because of this. Okay. So you switch them and you multiply one by negative. Thank you. Switch rows one and two, change sign on them. I only do row operations which keep the determinant the same. Alright, almost done. Now we're down at the diagonal matrices. That's these. And if you go even further, and you have a matrix which has a constant in the first term, and the ones all along the diagonal. Well, this is going to be an exercise for you. And it's very easy, but do it just in this case. So show that D1, 0, 0, D2 can be homotopped. Let me show you one thing that doesn't work. Yeah, this is probably obvious to a lot of you, but how am I say? What you might want to do is this. Uh, let's do T minus 1.
why does it need bang? Well, I mean, don't think it is, but I'll tell you why I think it is. Just to make it precise so that no one knows what I mean. Um, it's not defining space for K theory, it's V across V. Okay, it's vector bundles, the Z tells you the range. Okay. That's just what it is. What happens in these examples is that the suspension comes over to be a loop. The loop only sees one component, so the Z really goes away.
So if you go back to the properties I said we should expect from homotopy classes of maps, one was homotopy invariance, one was a long exact sequence, and homotopy group. We're going to get that from homotopy pullback. Mapping space from X into my object can be recovered from the mapping spaces from U, B, and bringing up the number top on the intersection. These were just sets, and I had the pullback rather than the homotopy pullback. This would be a sheet condition. This is the analog when you're dealing with the homotopy. The equivalence. So the value of X plus the equivalence. I know I'm out of time, I'm going to go for five minutes long, and then let you go. So I told you before that just dealing with the naive homotopy classes of the maps, well, that's too naive, you have to do with mapping spaces. So these functors aren't supposed to be encapsulating the properties of mapping spaces. Properties are satisfied by these functors in topology. And in fact, in topology, every functor satisfying these properties looks like this. Topology is a kind of topological space and is very flexible. Turn any functor like that, you can make a space representing it. Through smooth schemes, there will be plenty of functors which you know, have these properties but which don't come from. So in some sense, what we're doing is storing these new objects into our category. So it's just the machinery to do that. Now, well, I feel like in some sense it's unnecessary because those inductive limits are already in this category. Right? This category really is the formal, so if I just did sets, that would be the formal co-completion of the category scheme. Now I've added in a homotopy direction. So you can do end schemes and then do it again, but you're sort of just you're doing more than you have to. Yeah. Alright. Given any 
plugged through that. There's going to be a way of making it space like. Okay, let's call that space like. And I'll just write down the definitions for you. You guys have been begging me for these all the time. So, there are two things you have to do. The thing F is going to be the new functor whose value at x is the following thing. We're going to be making F homotopy invariant. We're going to be forcing this property. So, we're going to take F of x, F of x cross, one. 